What's up YouTube? Mike here with another video. Now it's been a little while since I've made a video and one of the last ones I made was actually talking about this tablet, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S4. Now when this was announced I did a video kind of giving my initial thoughts of what I think it would be and I kind of slammed a little bit so in this video I'm going to kind of change my tune a little bit and that's mostly because of Apple's own 2018 iPad Pros were not released uh, when this was released initially. So that's kind of changed my thoughts and opinions on the value of this tablet. So let's take a look at it. All right, so taking a look at this initially, uh, this is obviously the box. What you get in the box is nothing too exciting, so I didn't do an unboxing, but we'll set that to the side. But this is the actual tablet, and of course it's a 10.5 inch tablet. Glass on glass, um, so it is a fingerprint dirt debris magnet. Like I literally just cleaned this before this video and you may not be able to see it on video, but it just picks up smudges and dirt uh, really quickly. But what else you get in the box is obviously you'll get the charger and a USB-C cable because this is a USB-C connector 3.1. And this does enable you to do fast charging. And of course, unlike uh, Apple or anything, you do get the S Pen in the box, which I have over here. Now, one thing about this is there's nowhere to store it on the device itself. So I wish that they would have done like uh, the Surface uh, and then later Apple where you could actually magnetize the pin to the device so you don't essentially lose it. But uh, usually Samsung will actually include a smaller S Pen where you can actually store it within the device. But this one's a little more ergonomic, so it's better to use. So, but... Continuing on with the hardware, like I said, this is really excellent build. I mean, it is a really good looking device. And it's honestly the best Android tablet you can get bar none. Because um, anymore, it's kind of getting to be a rarity to see a flagship Android tablet. But like I said, it's a 10.5 inch AMOLED display. Um, turn this thing on. I don't know how well this thing will show up on camera. Um, but it is a very nice display. It's got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Ratio, As you can see, it's got, it does have bezels, but they're not that big. I mean, really, it's about the same size as you'd see on the new 11 inch or 12.9 inch uh, iPad Pro. And um, definitely smaller than the previous gen iPads, if you're into that or really give a crap. But I don't mind the bezels. I think they're fine. Uh, no issues with it whatsoever. It does, again, have one USB Type-C port on the bottom, and that is literally the only port you get. All right, I got to call another timeout real quick on the USB Type-C port. I did talk about that, but I didn't really elaborate. Now, with this USB Type-C port, um, you can actually do something with it besides charge and read SD cards. So um, if you bought the 2018 iPad Pro, you can do the, exactly the same crap you can do with the 2017 and below lightning adapter or lightning port. Uh, so with Apple, you got a USB-C port. You can't really do shit with it except charge your device, read some uh, SD cards, and kind of that's about the extent of it. With this, like I said, it's got a real file management. So I can take this USB-C port, I can put a dongle on it like I've showed you or going to show you with the DeX, um, plug a monitor in it, plug a hard drive, and actually read the freaking hard drive and really anything else I want to plug into this. So the USB-C port is more than just charging. Um, it actually allows you to um, use it for other things. I mean, it's a 3.1 USB-C, 3.1 port, so you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So you get one negative on this um, is they did not include a headphone jack. I'm not entirely sure why, but they didn't. And then on the bottom, you've got a Pogo connector, which right now, as far as I know, the only thing it works with is Samsung's own keyboard, which is sold separately. But I did pick that up, so I'll show that to you guys. And then, of course, going around, you've got quad speakers, which sound really good on this. So you've got four speakers. So you've got one on each corner. Then you've got your standard power button volume rocker, and it does have a SIM card tray. This particular model happens to be the Cellular model from T-Mobile, but... Whether you get a cellular or a Wi-Fi model, the design's the same. You're going to have a kind of a SIM tray that pops out right here. 
and that's where you put your SD card and it'll support SD cards up to 400 gigabytes. Now, of course, this does have a front and rear camera. The front camera is eight megapixels and the rear camera is 13 megapixels. And this will shoot 4K video at 30 frames a second. Now, <clears throat> I'm not gonna show you any video samples or anything that, like that because I just honestly don't care. I mean, the cameras are good, trust me. But uh, if you're gonna do something like Skype or Hangouts, then you're not gonna have any issues with the clarity of the camera. The cameras are good. And if you want to take pictures with the rear camera or do video, scan documents, you're not going to have any issues. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the cameras because people don't buy tablets for the camera, really. I mean, maybe there's like one or two of you out there, but for the most part, I don't think people really care about cameras on tablets that much. Now, you've got two color options for this. This is obviously the black one. You can also get it kind of in a light gray. And the other omission... What I don't like about this is there is no fingerprint sensor. Now this does have a face unlock slash iris scan feature. And I will be honest, it works okay. Um, I've got, you know, an iPhone 10R right here. And Face ID, as much as I like to hit on Apple, works pretty well. But um, this, I will say, doesn't work as well as Face ID. It just seems kind of finicky. I mean, it works most of the time, but there's enough errors where I notice it where either I'll have to reposition, move around, or just put in my passcode. But I'll see if I can show you here. And that's ideal conditions, and it worked just fine because I've got plenty of light. I'm looking right at it. And it also works in landscape mode. There it goes. So in a situation like this where I've got good lining, I'm looking right at it, it works just fine. But um, if you don't have good lining, sometimes it can be finicky. Like I said, it does have iris and uh, face unlock. So face unlock is not as secure as the iris scanning, but it is faster. So I pretty much just use face unlock uh, because it's faster. All right, so moving away from the actual hardware of this, uh, let me show you the optional accessory and I'll get into the prices in a little bit, but this is Samsung's own keyboard case and I'll talk about that about in a little bit, but I'm just going to go ahead and snap this thing in here just so it'll hold itself up. And one thing I do like is it's actually got a little thing to hold the S Pen. All right, so moving on to the specs of this device. Now, when I did my initial preview video of this a few months ago, I kind of initially hammered this thing on the specs. And that's because this is actually rocking last year's Snapdragon 835. Now, honestly, in everyday use, I have not noticed any delays. I've been using this for about three weeks now. And I got to say, everything's been snappy. Apps have run smoothly. Internet, YouTube, you name it. Using Dex, haven't had any issue whatsoever with this device. So even though it is last year's Snapdragon 835, no issues whatsoever, honestly, in day-to-day -day performance. Now, this does equipped, come equipped with four gigabytes of RAM, which, again, I would have liked to seen more RAM and a newer processor just for what you're paying for this thing. But, again, in everyday, day-to-day -day use, I haven't noticed any slowdowns or issues with what's inside of this thing. So, this comes in two storage options, 64 gigabyte or 256. This happens to be the 64 gigabyte model. And... As far as the battery goes in this thing, um, I couldn't tell you the exact size, but it's a big ass battery. And I will say that the battery life is really good. Honestly, you're getting eight to 10 hours depending on your usage. Um, now Samsung advertises something like 16 hours for a video playback test. Obviously I haven't tested that. I'm not gonna sit here and with the stopwatch and see how long the battery takes to die. But I will say that the battery life is good. I have no complaints. It seems to me to be comparable to my iPad. I mean, I've got a 12.9 inch second gen iPad Pro here, and I don't think that the battery on this is really any longer than what's on the Samsung tablet. Now, I will say that this does support fast charging, so it does charge really quickly. So honestly, probably two hours of this charging this thing will give you damn near full charge, if not all the way. Again, I didn't sit there with a freaking timer and time it, but I'll say that it charges really quickly. So. You should not have any issue with battery life or charging this up quickly if you happen to drain the battery. All right, so let's go ahead and transition into the performance. Like I've kind of already mentioned, even though this does have last year's specs, 
and lower RAM that I would have liked to see. The performance of this has been really, really good. Now, multi-window on this, multitasking works like a champ. And that's obviously having two apps open at once. And honestly, compared to the iPad, multitasking is leaps and bounds better on this. Now, that's not even using, including DeX. When you use DeX, it takes up to a whole never level. But just multi-window on this, it just works better. The software is better optimized. Um, you know what apps support it, and it gives you the list of all the apps. Unlike on the iPad, when you're using multi-window, it's only going to show the ones that you've had open recently. So if you haven't had it recently, you don't have that option. So it's kind of clunky on the iPad, to be honest with you. And it's slower. But again, performance is excellent. Multi-window works good on this. So if you've got a Note device, you're no stranger to Samsung, it works the exact same way, but it works great. Again, the cameras, I've already mentioned them. Um, they're good. There's no complaints whatsoever for the cameras. Sound is awesome on this thing. You've got four speakers on all four corners. Uh, it's Dolby Atmos tuned by AKG, AKG so whatever the hell that means. Um, basically, they're good. The sound is good. No issues, no complaints with the sound of this tablet. Now, one of the best things about Samsung tablets, especially the Note series, is the S Pen. Now, Samsung has really kind of been the pioneer with using the S Pen, um, developing the S Pen all the way back to the Note 1. And honestly, I think it's the best integration on any tablet has always been Samsung when it comes to the Note series uh, or the S Pen. Just the integration is seamless. Now with the Apple Pencil, obviously the Apple Pencil is a pretty good product. I'm not going to complain. I got one. I use it. But uh, the integration that Samsung does with the S Pen uh, with their UI is just leaps and bounds above any of the competition. Um, no issue with drawing with this, writing with this. Works like it should. I mean, it it works really well. And again, it is included in the box, so that is definitely a bonus. And what makes this tablet stand out and so good is honestly DeX. Now, before having used a Galaxy Note 8 and having a DeX dock and having to show you having to uh, use DeX, it wasn't as uh, seamless or it was kind of a pain in the butt. If you wanted to use DeX, obviously you had to have a monitor and all that, but this being a tablet, Dex is actually built into it and it works really well. So to me, um, it kind of reminds me of like a mini Chromebook really. So, um, my biggest complaint, I guess on this tablet is I wish that Samsung would have released a larger model. So this again is a 10.5 inch display, 10.5 inch model, but I just wish Samsung would have included or given the option for a bigger display, you know, basically the same size as the iPad pro. So, if this had a 12 inch display, it would make using the DeX experience that much better. Now with DeX, if you buy this optional keyboard, um, you can have it in the settings where as soon as you dock it on the keyboard, it'll go into DeX mode. I happen to um, not like that, so I disabled it, but it's easy to get to. You just swipe down from the top and you just select DeX and this will launch into DeX. Now again, this is what I think makes this tablet so productive and so good is just um, with DeX, you turn this into literally a mini laptop. So um, unlike with the iPads where they call it an iPad Pro, but you can't even do something simple like use mouse, a mouse uh, with the iPad is kind of, kind of stupid. To say that this can replace a laptop is still not quite there for me personally, but I think for 90% of the population, absolutely. Now, if you're thinking about getting a Chromebook, one of the premium Chromebooks, it's over $500. I would get this instead. I would take this any day over a Chromebook Pixel. Um, just due to the fact that it's a tablet first. So the Android apps obviously work as they should way better. But with Dex, you've got essentially the desktop mode that you would get on a Chromebook and it works really well. Um, I'll show you guys a demo connecting it to a monitor, but personally I like using it in DeX mode just as a tablet. 
um, just because again, it feels like a laptop and when you add the mouse, it makes it that much better. Really makes this stand out as opposed to an iPad Pro, whether you're talking the 2018 or 2017, is this has a real file management system. So as I'm showing you the Dex um, demo on the screen, you'll see what I'm talking about, but I can take a hard drive and plug it in and it will actually read it. You know, with the iPad, you're limited to just SD cards where you can see camera footage or video, depending on what the format of the video is, but there's not really a true file management system on the iPad Pro, which is disappointing. But with the Samsung, there is. Like I said, I can plug in a hard drive. I can access any of the files on it. It looks like a normal file system that you would see on a PC, and it works really well. But again, Dex, awesome. My favorite feature of this tablet, bar none, and that's why this really could replace your laptop and or uh, Chromebook, especially. So, and before I move on, I did want to talk about the keyboard. Like I said, I really do like it. It's just um, the thing that I don't like is that it's only got one angle and it's not detachable like you would have with the first gen uh, Apple Smart keyboard or um, a Surface keyboard where you can detach it. So you're always stuck with this thing, um, which kind of sucks, unless you pop this out of the shell, which is kind of a pain in the butt to do. But as far as typing goes, no issue. If you're on a flat surface, this one angle that it gives you really does work fine. It's kind of like the, the default angle. It works good, no issues with it, but it would be nice to have at least two to three different angles where I could adjust this uh, depending on where I'm using it. Because on my lap, this angle is not that good. I can still use it. I still do use it, but I would prefer a different angle. So, but other than that, it is a pretty good keyboard. One weird thing with this keyboard though, um, is this I get. When I undock it, it turns the screen off. So, no problem with that. But I wish there was an option where it didn't do that. <clears throat> As in, if I just want to, you know, go from using the keyboard, this, and I want to use it. The screen's turned off, which is kind of stupid. Another thing is, uh, this does magnetize itself closed. So it's got a pretty good magnet where it's going to hold itself closed. But if the tablet is on, there is no sleep or wake function. So if I close this, the screen is still on. I mean, I can see it. So it does not turn the screen off. I don't really quite understand why. That's kind of a stupid thing, but can be fixed with software. And same thing as if the screen's off and I open this, it doesn't turn on. So it doesn't do the sleep and wake function. I looked in my settings, made sure that's not the issue. So um, this is something they could fix in a software update. But those are really my only complaints with this keyboard. Other than that, I like it. It affords protection. It gives you somewhere to stick the S Pen. Even though this looks kind of clunky, 
I've been using this for about a month and the pen is not falling out yet. So it's, it's in there, it's not going anywhere. It just kind of looks a little clunky to me. All right, so that's pretty much it with the <clears throat> hardware of this thing, including the keyboard and the performance. Like I said, I've talked about decks. Favorite feature by far. Um, the issues that I have with this device, I kind of really already mentioned, and that's mostly with the keyboard. Um, and also face ID is kind of hit or miss, um, especially if you're in a darker environment. So um, I would say it's about 75% accurate unless you're in an environment like this. With lights like this, it works first time every time, but if I go somewhere where it's dimmer, not necessarily gonna work. So kind of a nuance and a complaint, but let's get to the brass tacks and what everybody really cares about. And that is the price of this device. Now, initially, when this was announced, I kind of did a video, which I'll link up here, if I remember, kind of hammering this device. But that was before Apple announced their 2018 iPad Pros and their ludicrous pricing on those. So I kind of broke this down. Um, so what this device cost, if you get the 64 gigabyte Wi-Fi only model, uh, and all the prices I'm going to give you are before taxes, is $649 and $749 if you go for the $256. Now, good thing is that includes the pin. And Walmart actually has a bundle where you can get the pin, the device, and the keyboard for only $699. So that is actually a pretty good deal. And if you live in the U.S., you want this device, the non-cellular model, I recommend you go to Walmart and get the bundle because it includes all three for $6.99, which is pretty fair price because the keyboard alone, if you buy it separately, is $149. So um, you're saving quite a bit. So if you just bought $6.49 plus keyboard, so you're looking at basically $800. Bucks. So you're saving $100 bucks if you buy the Walmart bundle. So pretty good deal. Now... <clears throat> Again, if you don't go with Walmart, it's going to be about uh, 800 bucks. So again, 700 for Walmart, 699, same thing. But again, I complained that this was too expensive until I looked at Apple's pricing. So I want to share real quick the price of the 2018 iPad Pro models. So if you go with the 11 inch, which is what this will be comparable to because it's 10.5 inch, um, the 11 inch iPad Pro Wi Fi only was going to cost you um, $799, and that is for uh, 64 gigabytes of storage. So that's just for the tablet. So that doesn't include the Apple Pencil or the keyboard. So $800 for what it costs to get all of this. And uh, so, really, that makes this feel like a bargain because the new Apple Pencil cost $129. The new Apple Smart Keyboard cost $879. So grand total to get this configuration for the 11 inch 2018 iPad Pro would cost you $1,100, $1,107 to be exact, plus tax. So this seems like a bargain all of a sudden. And uh, I mean, that's that's about a $400 difference if you go with the Walmart bundle and 300 if you don't. So pretty substantial savings there. But overall, like I said, um, to wrap this up, this is the absolute best Android tablet you can get, bar none. Um, really, for most people, this could be your all-in-one device. This could replace your laptop, your tablet, and your desktop. Um, because it's got a true file management, it's got a port that you can actually plug stuff in that works, and just the DeX functionality is second to none. My personal only gripe with this is just some of the Android apps. Again, not as good as what you see on the iOS side, specifically for video editing. So me, I use LumaFusion. That's my primary and only video editing uh, software that I use. And on Android, not that this necessarily wouldn't have the hardware and horsepower to run it. You just don't have it. Um, I guess kind of the closest thing I found is called Kind Master, and I still think it's garbage. It's got a phone interface. It's just you can't do near the amount of stuff that you can do with LumaFusion. So honestly, video editing apps on Android I think are garbage. Um, 
Obviously, I'll probably get a little hate in the comments because some people are going to say, well, this one, this one, this one. But I've tried quite a bit. I've tried Power Director and Kind Master and a few others, and I just think they're all, they all suck, in my opinion. Um, if you've used LumaFusion and then you go try one of those, you'll see what I mean. But really, um, when it comes to raw horsepower uh, graphics processing, the iPad is still the king. I mean, the A12 Bionic Chip X, whatever the hell it's called now, is a pretty beastly chip but honestly um apple hinders it it's like putting a v8 in a freaking uh, pinto it's just you can't utilize the power um same thing with the ipad so it's kind of overkill but with this it's got like i said last year's processor four gigs of ram but it works flawlessly does everything it should do so um for most people this could be your only device so um, with that, if you guys have specific questions on this tablet or something you want to see, drop it in the comments below. I mean, I've done a lot of art videos on like the Galaxy Tab A 10.1 with S Pen, and it's no different on here. I mean, the S Pen is the S Pen is the S Pen. It's a great experience. It always has been a great experience, and it'll continue to be. So I didn't feel like doing all those extra videos on this because really, I mean, if you've seen them one, you've seen them all. So um, with that, Thanks for watching. Hopefully it doesn't take me another three months to make another video. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you've not subscribed, go ahead and do so. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks.